Hello and welcome back to Grim Survival, all of my fellow fellow gremlins. Glad you could be here. I see that somebody has been leaving their gremlins out in the rain again and they are multiplying. So thank you to all the new subscribers that are coming over from uh, the places you're coming from. I really do appreciate that. Remember, if you haven't done so already, you can support the channel by just hitting the little subscribe button that's it's there somewhere depending on what device you're using it's there somewhere or give me a like or dislike whichever one you see fit either one works for me all right this is going to be my gray man concept video now this is an overview overview and basic ideas of gray man a lot of this information is going to be a little repetitive in these sections um, the reason this is an overview or not complete is because it would take an entire novel a book a whole book to write down everything that needs to be included in the gray man concept it really would and that's already been done not by me I did not write that book but I do encourage you to look them up I did not bother to grab the titles for you before this video because I just didn't so yeah um, so keep that in mind as we are going through the list I put together I had spent some time uh, typing this out, editing it, and doing all the things I needed to do before I even started the recording process. So yeah, it took a while, but here it is. And let me do the whole magic camera. Okay, that's not the magic camera. Where is my magic camera? That didn't go right. I'm supposed to be on the screen. Where did I go? I'm on here somewhere. Oh, there I am. That's not working right. There we go. Magic camera thing. I'll put me, yeah, somewhere out of the way out of the way Graham get out of the way <laughs> yeah I gotta work on my magic camera tricks all right that's probably here will make me smaller there we go why am I even on the screen I don't need to be on the screen I don't know anyway as you can see we are looking at the gray man concept the concept I have done what I usually do and sectioned it off. I've made a video similar to this about the bug out concept before. I'm going to be including this in a playlist. I will also include this document file in a download in the description as well as share it to my Patreon and my Discord as I usually do. Um, I, I did share it to Facebook last time. I'll, I'll consider that. I'm really not too happy with Facebook and Twitter as of late. So um, yeah, keep that in mind. All right. Uh, hope everybody can see this. Pull up your chairs. This might be a long one. It might be. I don't know. I, I didn't time it. <laughs> we'll see. All right. The concept. A. Blending in with your environment. Rather, rather you be at home, in a city, small town, in the woods or forest. The concept is the same. Similar to military style camouflage concepts. Being able to move around a crowd of people without being noticed or remembered. Uh, being mindful of the people around you and trying not to attract attention to yourself. You want to be the person that is easily forgotten. And if you were put in a lineup of people, such as a police lineup, you they would not be able to pick you out of the group by something they remember about you. And that is the basic concept of Gray Man. To be forgotten. To walk through a crowd of people and nobody remembers any distinct features about you so not everyone can be the gray man or gray person if you want to you know make it gender gender neutral or whatever they call that stuff nowadays anyway whatever but anyway not everyone can do it and I'll go into that a little bit later all right so section one at home at home yes at home it is important to blend into your home environment as it is any place else. Just as important as it is any place else. Maybe I should, uh, yeah, read that correctly. I wrote it and can't even read it. And yeah, it really is important to blend in in your home environment. And there's several reasons for that, and we'll go over those here in a second. Um, section A, appearance. Let's start with your appearance. You should always be mindful of your appearance, even in your neighborhood or at home. If you're checking the mail wearing, wearing full body armor and fully armed, you're not blending in. Dress like all the rest. It's a little saying I have. Dress like all the rest. In different places, different clothing is used. If you live in a city, it may be normal to dress in more business-like clothing. For example, in higher class areas, people might wear khaki pants, polo shirts, things like that 
you know, things like that. Um, people work in working class areas may be dressed more relaxed, jeans, a t-shirt, work boots, similar things like that. Maybe a flannel shirt that looks similar to this one. Possibly. Possibly. Doing things differently will make you stand out and be remembered by people. If you are checking the mail in a cowboy hat, for example, like this one, while you live in the middle of a city, you're going to stand out. In some areas, a cowboy hat is normal and could help you blend in, such as Texas. So avoid wearing clotho clothing with logos, uh, sayings, you know, your favorite Metallica or ACDC t-shirt. That's going to be something somebody remembers about you. If you're, you know, just walking outside of your house, checking your mail, and you're wearing your bathrobe, your neighbors are going to pay attention to things like this. People are going to remember it. The guy driving down the road, if he's not staring at his phone, is going to look over. Oh, look at this guy. He's wearing his pajamas outside. People are going to remember that. They're going to take note of that. And they might even remember it throughout their entire day. And by the end of the day, they get home. They, they're talking to their spouse. They're saying, yeah, I seen this guy in his pajamas earlier. I could tell you exactly what he looked like. See, that's the opposite of gray man. It really is. So try to avoid being different is the biggest key to this. Body type can play a big part in your appearance. If you live in an area full of people who work out a lot, they're very muscular, they go to the yoga class, whatever, it would look, it would be normal for you to look that way as well. If you're the skinny pale person that doesn't get out much and doesn't get a lot of sun, when you do end up going outside or you know, visiting crowds of people or going into a public place, you're going to stand out. If you're the only skinny pale person there, somebody's going to remember you. Somebody probably will. Now, you know, we'll get into the different aspects of that a little bit later. How you are perceived by the people around you or even your neighbors is a part of your appearance. If you speak the same, use the same slang as they do. If everybody on your neighborhood is constantly dropping, dropping the F-bomb everywhere they go, then start dropping it right next to them. I mean, yeah, that's just the basics of it. Work on your accent because if you don't sound the same already, work on your accent. If you're from Texas and you moved to New York, you're going to sound like a Texan. Practice sounding like a New Yorker, just for one example, just for one example. A hairstyle can be a big part in how you are perceived by others. If you are walking down a hiking trail with a giant purple mohawk on your head, somebody's going to remember that. Even several days later, somebody's going to remember that to the point of being able to identify you. Like, oh yeah, that's the guy with the purple mohawk. I mean, that's just the way that is. People remember very distinct things about people. And if you have piercings, you have face tattoos, you have tattoos up your arms, you know, your neighbors are going to take note of that. The people are going to remember that. I mean, it, it, that goes into not standing out as well and not even being able to be the gray man because if you have sleeve tattoos and you're in a business type scenario and you're wearing a polo shirt and they can see your, you know, your tattoos, you're going to be remembered by them. But in the same aspect, if you are covering your tattoos by wearing long sleeve shirts, you also might stand be you know, stand out to certain people. So, you know, like I keep saying, not everybody can pull this off. It's it's just not possible for everybody. And yeah, I'll go into that more here in a little bit. All right, operational security or opsec has a lot of uh, military uh, people like to call it. It's it's a concept that was developed by the military, and yeah, I'm not going into that too much, but. Like I said, this is going to be repetitive, so keep that in mind also. So operational security OPSEC is a risk management process that is used to reduce adversary exploitation of friendly critical information. I got that definition from Wiki. <laughs> anyway, to go into my words, knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. It is very, very important to remember that what you say can be used against you not only by law enforcement, but also by people around you. If you allow others to have sensitive information about things you have, such as food preps, that could put you at risk during an SHTF situation. Some may, some, uh, may want neighbors to be prepared. They'll even try to talk to them about preparing and topics like that. It's, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Just remember when doing it, you could be giving away vital information about how well prepared you are. 
So this falls under gray man, in my opinion. If, you, if your neighborhood all knows that you're a prepper, then you are not the gray man of your neighborhood. Everybody knows you're a prepper. And when SHTF finally hits its you know full force here in a week or two, just a thought there, not necessarily going to happen, but you never know. It probably will happen, right? Anyway, that being said, if your whole neighborhood knows that you're the prepper when SHTF happens, your whole neighborhood's going to be standing outside your front door when they're hungry. So you need to keep this in mind. You, you need to practice certain things in the gray man aspect, even if it's not blending into a public situation. So, yeah, use caution. Use caution. When having things shipped to your home, make sure you bring it inside right away. Remove shipping labels and other product markings before putting the packaging back outside for the trash. You don't want your Smith & Wesson AR box sitting next to your trash can. I mean, that's just one example of many, but you know, this goes right along if you're having food, uh, bulk food shipped to your house, if you're having, you know, prepping gear, generators, anything people might find valuable in an SHTF situation. You are definitely giving away too much information just by setting the packaging outside so keep that in mind as well do not share information about your personal schedule with people or your neighbors they may already know when you come and go from your home just by being observant if they if they live next to you they may already know but don't volunteer that information you know if the new guy moves in across the road and he says hi what do you do oh you you go to work every morning yeah don't don't volunteer that information tell people you work from home that's the best kind i mean yeah it may be not exactly true but in a way it is still true because everybody works in their home so technically that being said technically you do so yeah just saying i mean technically try not to be predictable when coming and going from your home if someone is watching they will know what the best time to strike you is just from that information alone they're gonna know hey they're never here at this time of day I can tell you this about a couple of my neighbors some of them that work at night they're gone all night long they leave a window open with a TV on and it's usually on some kind of a sports game and they leave the TV on because they don't want their dog to be lonely information information it, it, knowledge is power we'll just leave it at that knowledge is power all right let's go into section two the public we're in public now the gray man concept really comes into play when you are in a public place the ability to move through a cloud a crowd not a cloud a crowd of people or through a store without being remembered or noticed is the key to being a gray man that is the reason the concept was developed now obviously the concept can be used in multiple aspects of your life but it was developed for people military style people uh, special ops things like that to blend in to their environments and their environments you know it may be in a wilderness setting it may be in an urban setting so blending in you, there's certain things about camouflage is not necessarily has to be green and brown and have camouflage style paint on it camouflage can be wearing a flannel shirt in a group of people wearing flannel shirts that's camouflage so yeah so let's go back into appearance again section 2a the same rules of appearance from your home apply in public dress like the rest if you are traveling remember to pack clothing for many situations do a little research on the fashion in the area you will be traveling to try to blend in if you're a business person going to business meetings in a town that you don't live in or a city you don't live in pack extra clothing for extra situations you may find yourself you know going out one night going to have a drink with somebody going to a restaurant going to dinner blending in dress like all the rest so have extra options for clothing when you're traveling when people go into public we sometimes carry extra stuff backpack purse etc make sure the bag is not flashy flashy and does not stand out many companies such as Maxpedition make gray man bags and gear um, my wife carries one there are they are a good example in some places just in some places just having a backpack will make you stand out while in other places such as near a college it would look perfectly normal 
If you are walking downtown in any city with a military style backpack, someone is going to notice that and probably remember that. Avoid wearing cologne or perfume. Smell triggers memory and it can be used not only to identify you, but it can also be used to track you. Avoid these things. Very strong scented soaps could be included in that as well. All right, we are at section 2B, OPSEC, Operational Security. Once again, like I said, this is going to be somewhat repetitive. It is possible to give away too much information even when walking through a crowd and not speaking to anyone. That should say anyone. It says anyway. And why does that say anyway? Let me fix that. Yeah, yeah. Typos, typos. There we go. We'll hit the save button. All right, where was I? Yeah, I lost my place now. I hit the save button and now I can't find it. All right, <laughs> try to avoid, oh, there we are. It is possible to give away too much information walking through a crowd and not speaking to anyone. Body language says a lot about you. If you are nervous, angry, or on edge, someone is going to notice that. So if you're just walking through a city on a normal everyday doing whatever you do and you're acting strange, someone's going to pay attention to that. More than likely, that's going to happen. People are going to see that and say, what's wrong with that person? Try to avoid speaking to people, asking for directions, giving directions. This can say many things about you. This can give away a lot of your information, that you know the area, you're from the area, or you don't know the area and you're not from around here. Those kinds of things bring additional questions in typical conversations. Where are you from? Where are you going? Just as a couple examples. Remember, if you find yourself in a situation where you're having to interact with people, be as boring as you can. Say boring things. I'm just here being like this. Be boring. You know, don't be excessively boring to where they think there's something wrong with you. But just be boring. You know, try to say mundane things and get to the point quickly. Remember not to be rude. Don't be rude. Can't, because being rude makes you very memorable. Remember the last time somebody was rude to you? Because I do. I remember the last time somebody was rude to me. Do not open carry a firearm. That says a lot about you. It brings attention and informs everyone that you are armed, obviously. it could. If you're carrying a backpack, it could also inform them that you have extra stuff in the backpack, such as extra ammunition. And ammunition, nowadays, is extraordinarily valuable and sought after. Yeah, it really is. So keep that in mind. Don't go around opening, open carrying. It's just, there's no point to it whatsoever anyway. This isn't the Wild West, and you're just giving away too much information by doing that in the first place. Okay, so this is going to be a little nasty. Do not leave waste out in the open. This includes human waste, such as going to the restroom, the bathroom, or, you know, doing your business on the side of the road. Leaving things behind like that tells people a lot about where you have been, where you are currently going, and it may even tell them that you have food. If you're doing the number two on the side of the road, you're only doing that because you've been eating. So where did they get the food? And they're headed probably that way because there's the smell headed that way. So just saying. Yeah, I told you it was going to be nasty. All right, section 2C. Try not to eyeball people. Don't look them in the eye. Just don't look at them all together. This brings attention to you. Remember, most people are looking at phones and not at people or things around them. You can use this to your advantage. Most phones, when powered off, are very reflective and can be used to see things around you just by looking at the black screen using it as a mirror. It could help you see things around you. You could also turn on the phone's camera and use it to look around acting like you're uh, watching a video, texting someone, but remember not to let anyone see your screen if you're doing this. I mean, if you're walking around like this, this is not completely unheard of. I see people doing it all the time. If you're walking around like this, obviously you're letting people know that you're you know, doing something, probably recording something. In certain situations, recording things would be seen as perfectly normal. It really would. If you're standing in the middle of, you know, something drastic happening around you and you're not the guy recording something, you could very well be, you know, pointed out for that. Somebody might remember, oh, he's the only person in the crowd that's not recording this. Wonder why. 
maybe his phone's dead somebody's gonna pick up on that and remember it so yeah just be discreet when you're doing things like this and don't let people see your screen if you're using it as a camera if somebody's walking near you just act like you're watching porn or something you don't want them to see it right right okay <laughs> don't watch porn it's bad for you <sighs> all right go with the flow walk in crowds of people that are dressed and look similar this will make you blend in with them and possibly bring less attention to yourself now keep in mind if the crowd of people starts to panic panic with them because yeah if they're all acting crazy and you're the only calm person standing there guess what somebody's gonna be like oh you're calm I'm following you and then they're gonna remember you and they're gonna you know tell their friends about you this guy was the the bad guy this this was you know the BA word that that was him he, he was all you know calm during the chaos that was going on around me so if you're walking with a group of people and you need to go a different direction look for more people going the direction you need to be going and try to transition from one group to the other in the most you know not noticeable way possible it's still possible somebody could pick up on this but it, it's still possible if that's not available walk slower than the crowd of people you're walking with make yourself look tired act tired because you can use that as an excuse to slow down and let them pass in front of you and when they're far enough ahead of you most of the time people aren't looking behind them then you can slip away all right section three section three is shtf scenarios now i could have written a whole book on this alone so i'm just covering small amounts of the concept here so yeah just please keep remembering that this is not a complete guide to gray man all right like i said repetitive section 3a appearance in any type of shtf situation the general appearance of everyone will change Clothing will become dirty, maybe even damaged. Make sure your clothing matches the people around you. Even if they are dirty, you don't want to be the only person with a clean shirt. You're going to stand out, and that could even turn you into a target. Because if you have the clean shirt and everybody around you is completely trashed, then they know that somehow, some way, you washed your shirt. And if you're not standing next to a washboard next to a lake, you're probably going to be remembered. That's going to, you know, make you stand out to these people. People themselves may also be dirty. Your hair may be dirty, your face, etc. Blend in. Make sure you are just as dirty and smelly as the rest of the people around you. Or it will be noticed. Just, it will be. So you, you want to be... If, like I said, if everybody's trashed and dirty, same concept. If they all have dirt on their face, they have messy hair, they haven't showered in a week. If you walk out there in a clean shirt, you're smelling nice, looking good. You're going to be remembered. Keep that in mind. So, uh, yeah, what did I put here? Uh, you will be seen as everyone else, another random person in a group of random people. That's really the goal. You want to be just another random person in the random group of people. All right, Section 3B, OPSEC, Operational Security. Here we are again. At home, if the power goes out, you don't want lights coming from your home. Even emergency solar lights could paint a target on your home, make someone think you have something in there. The lights themselves may be something someone else wants to take. If you have people that are unprepared, the power's completely out, it's been out for days, their flashlights are dead, they've burnt through all their candles already, they see solar lights on in your house, they might just come just to take the solar lights, and that's just trouble you don't want. So, you don't want to be broadcasting that you have light in a house during a power outage that is prolonged because that's going to give away more information than you want to give away. That's going to tell people that you are a little better prepared than they are, and then they might try to take what you have. So keep that in mind. Lighting is a big thing. Use blackout blinds and things like this in your house so light can't escape. If you don't have blackout blinds, thick blankets work very well. If you don't have that, aluminum foil works very well. I mean, there are so many different ways. Last resort, paint your window. Now, I do say last resort because you want that the ability to see out during the daylight by taking off whatever you put up. You want to keep the situational awareness going there. All right, moving on. 
the neighbors will start losing weight. You have to lose weight also, or you're going to give away that you have food. I mean, if you're the only person who's staying the exact same weight you were after prolonged SHTF, everyone else is looking much skinnier, much hungrier. You don't want to go out there looking like you've been eating because then they're going to know that you have food. So if you are cooking, you want to do your best to block the smell. You want to seal the cracks, you know, put the blankets on the windows, things like this. Uh, designate a certain room in the center of your house, like a bathroom or something like that, with no exterior windows to cook in. Block off the doorway with a blanket or a sheet or something like that to keep the smell from escaping. And if possible, only cook really late at night when people are probably sleeping. Probably because that's going to be your best bet. Remember, smell travels very far, and people who are not eating, if you go three days without eating, it's a proven scientific fact that your senses become enhanced for smells and sounds. It's a natural skill that we humans have for hunting. Uh, most of us. Not everybody, but most of us. So, that being said, if the neighbors are going to the FEMA truck to get food and water, you have to go also. Even if you don't need it, you still have to go also. Because if you're turning things down that everyone else needs, that's going to tell everyone else that you have things such as food and water. You have a stockpile and you're hoarding now and they want what you have. So if everyone else is going to the FEMA truck or whatever it is that's delivering food and water, and, and this could possibly happen, go to. Collect the same thing everyone else is collecting. You don't have to use it right away. If you feel bad about it, you know, I just don't. Don't feel bad about it. I mean, that's all I can say. You're not taking anything away from anyone else. They're giving it to everybody. So, yeah. I mean, you'd feel even worse if people start breaking down your front door to take what you have. So, you just, yeah, that's just how that is. Running a generator will give away that you have something worth powering. What could you possibly be powering with a generator when everyone else has nothing? Probably a refrigerator, a freezer. I don't know. Maybe you have a cell phone that's working. People are addicted to those things and they will come looking just for that. Just for that. So running a generator can be a very bad idea. Solar generators are the way to go because they're quiet. But they do have fuel powered, gas powered, quiet generators. They make them. They're expensive. I don't own one. Shining a flashlight around outside is going to tell people that you have things they might want. You have extra batteries. You have a flashlight that works, especially in a prolonged situation where everyone else has probably already burnt through their batteries and those little three triple A's they keep in that little thing that they bought from the gas station that day that died last week. And you're out there with your 2000 lumen through night. And yeah, they're going to know that you have something that's going to give away too much information. And you don't want to be giving out information. All right, section 3C. We're getting close to the end here. We are. Section 3C. Blending in. The same rules apply. Make yourself look like everyone else. Dress like the rest. Lose weight. Become dirty. Keep yourself. Keep to yourself as much as you can. Move with crowds if you are in a public area. Try not to draw attention. On foot. Try to move at night. If it's SHTF and there's no crowds of people around... Move at night. Try to keep to the shadows. If you need to rest, hide yourself. Hide yourself as much as you can. Bury yourself in leaves if you have the ability. Bury yourself in trash if you're in a city. Hide yourself. It really is a, a very important thing. If you find a crowd to move with, do what they do. If something happens, they're all shocked and awed and surprised. Be surprised. Be shocked, awed, and surprised. Act like they act. We covered this before, so we're just you know reiterating. So those uh, those people, as bad as it is to say, are shields for you. They really are. They can block projectiles. Yes, they can. They can give you cover, but they also can be a security risk to you. For example, if people start rounding up crowds, or if they're already blocking projectiles. Your goal at that point is to disappear, to vacate the area and get away from the crowd. So keep in mind crowds, while they work really well for blending in and keeping cover, 
they also can work against you. If they start to panic and all going different directions and somebody knocks somebody over, they're going to stampede you and trample you. And yeah, so moving with a crowd, stay near the rear of it is my suggestion on that. It's just one suggestion. Other ideas. Cigarettes. Cigarettes, even if you do not smoke, they can be useful to you. Because if you're standing there holding a cigarette, then people think, oh, they're just standing there holding a cigarette. And that gives you the opportunity to stop, assess, and observe. Assess the situation around you, observe what's going on. People won't pay too much attention to you because they think you're just smoking. Even if you don't smoke, hold the thing. Be like Clinton. Don't inhale. Right? All right. Keep your situational awareness. Keep your head on a swivel. swivel. Just don't make it obvious. Just don't make it obvious. Now, that's not the easiest thing to do. But like I said, you can use your phone. You're just looking at your camera. You're just, you know, watching a video. Whatever you're doing, move discreetly. Move All move, movements discreet. All movements. Try to not blend in. Practice now. Walk into a public location and watch people. Pay attention to how everyone is dressed in your area. Pick out people that are different and test yourself on how long you can remember them. Do it, you know, while you're thinking about it. Oh, there's that guy in that Metallica shirt over there. And when you're leaving an hour later, set an alarm, set an alarm on your phone. It goes off. What was I supposed to remember? Oh, yeah, the guy in the Metallica shirt. Test yourself. Practice. These skills are practice skills. People go to special training to learn skills like this, and it requires muscle memory. Your brain is a muscle. It needs practice. Yeah, you can't fix stupid. Practice, practice, practice. Uh, also, while you're in the public place, when you're testing yourself, pay attention to anyone looking at you. If there's something different about you, if you're not wearing the mask, if you're wearing a hat like this and you're walking through Walmart, people will pay attention to you. Pay attention to the people that are watching you because these people are more situational aware, typically, or maybe you're just that weird. One of the two. But either way, pay attention to them. Notice them as much as they're noticing you. And then you can use that to change whatever it is they're noticing if you can realize what they're noticing the hat the shirt you know whatever it may be you can then work to change that the next time you're practicing remember not everyone can pull off gray man tactics various things can make this impossible for you for instance being too tall or being too short if you're walking in a crowd of people and you are the tallest person there you are going to be noticed and remembered. Oh yeah, I remember the giant guy. If you're walking through a crowd and you're the shortest person there, oh yeah, I remember the little guy. Females, unfortunately for you, if you have a large chest, people are going to notice and pay attention. That's just how life works. People, mostly men, are going to be paying attention and they're going to remember that. So this can prevent you from being you know the gray person gray man as it happens to be you know classified as just various things if you have you know a broken tooth like this one if i, if I try to smile at somebody they're going to remember oh yeah the guy with the broken tooth and the cowboy hat yeah it, it's still there it's just broken just so you know anyway that's pointless information but uh there are so many things that can just prevent you from being the you know person that's not noticed and not remembered you you could have a mole i mean it, there's just a million different things it's definitely case specific and and it will change drastically in shtf it will because the more dirt everyone else has on your face the more you can cover whatever it is with dirt on your face uh, the longer shtf goes on the more people are going to have broken teeth for example but yeah if if there's just something about you tall short you know just really hugely built people are going to notice that people are going to pay attention to that and it's going to make it absolutely impossible for you to blend in and that is the goal is blending in so a gray man or person blends in no matter what the situation knowing what is happening around you will be key head on a swivel 
pay attention to body language. If people are nervous, so are you. I mean, I, I covered this earlier. People are panicking. People are acting nervous. They're acting anxious. And you're in a crowd of people acting this way. You need to do so also. This also falls into your home situation, your home area. If you are, you know, on talking terms with neighbors and you go outside and your neighbors are freaking out and saying this and this and whatever they just watched on the news, freak out right along with them. Oh, yeah, yeah, I seen that too. And blah, 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 blah. And just make yourself blend in. Make yourself seem like just the normal. You know, whatever normal is for your area, whatever these people perceive as being normal, you need to be that. You need to be the normal yet somewhat boring person to pull this off. And all right, this video is running a little long. I could probably do a part two, three, four, five, all the way through 30 on this and just write a whole book. Like I said previously, I probably could. But I'm not going to because that's been done. People have done it. Many, many people have done it. If you type in Gray Man, I think there's even a movie. There is a book that is just a, uh, a novel, and I forget who writes it. It's titled The Gray Man, and it's about a spy. And he didn't do a very good job of blending in, in my opinion. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of this in movies. They incorporate these things in movies like uh, the spy movies and things like that. If anybody watches something like that, you can see some of these concepts in these movies keep in mind they're just movies so yeah the concepts are, are greatly exaggerated and the implement how they implement these concepts are greatly exaggerated in movies also um practice 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 if you want to try to blend in and and i think that with how things are going currently being able to or having knowledge about blending in with the people around you could help you it really could help you in an SHTF or a panicked situation. If you were, you know, just blending in when they come to to the crowd of people with their little needles, they might not pay attention to you. You're not going to be first. You might have an opportunity to slip away. So it very well could help you in any type of situation. So again, practice, practice, practice. All right, I'm shutting up now. This has been James with Grim Survival. Hey, let me make myself bigger so I can, I can, yeah, close enough. Anyway, I really am shutting up. This has been James with Grim Survival. Thank you for watching. Thank you for all the support you give me. Remember, I have links in the description if you want to further support the channel. And I also have the link for uh, Grindstone Ministries, which if you want to know more about that, you can just click the link or go over to Bear Independent and he tells you all about it all right i'm not affiliated with him i've, I've sent him some emails and tried to uh get some uh try to figure out how i can help more because i can't help with money or monetize anything I, yeah i just can't help like that but i can help in other ways so i have definitely reached out and i'm waiting for a reply all right like i said i'm shutting up this has been james of grim survival thank you guys for watching see you next time